Hey, it's Microgasm. We're back with some Sil Q. And we are back with our character Ladros today. So, the stairs to the throne room are right next to me. But before we go down, I just want to talk about a couple of things that I've been thinking about since the last video. So, one of them relates to the last video, so I'll just go ahead and get that one out of the way. Which is, I wonder if some people noticed that... Uh, when I was reloading my character, Hyalith, uh, there was another character in the um, character file or character folder named Wizkid. And I was like, I was wondering afterwards, I wonder if people who are wondering who Wizkid is. <laughs> um, so I think at some point I'll do a video on how to use wizard mode. So I've used wizard mode a lot in the past to try to learn about um the systems in SIL and do some testing and try to understand how the game works. Uh, I used to use it when I was making the tiles to go around the the game and um, you know see what the tiles look like in, in place. Um, and I use it sometimes when I'm in between recordings to test things to make sure I'm you know getting details right. So I because I do try to be accurate um, as much as I'm able to in these videos. Um, so yeah, wizard mode is a really useful thing to know how to do, uh, and I would like to, to make a tutorial about it. Um, basically, after you make a character into a, wiz a wizard mode character, you can't turn it back. But they're just a wizard mode character from then on. So I always make a separate file, and I always call my wizard mode characters Wizkid. So, there you go. I just thought I would point that out in case anyone was wondering. Um, the next thing is that uh, a, I got a YouTube comment by Arbit, and he was saying that the boots of the Iron Hills that let you stand fast against your foes, in addition to preventing you from getting knocked back, they also prevent you from uh, having Cat Warriors exchange places with you, which is super cool. Really good to know. That really brings them up in the power rankings, in my opinion. Because, uh, you know, having Cat Warriors exchange places with you can put you in a bad position, get you surrounded, that kind of thing. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention was that recently on uh, Discord, um, MTF, or Monday, Tuesday, Friday, he was... Uh, he's been getting into Sil Q recently, and he had a character that was... Uh, really late in the game uh, and even down into the throne room and he was uh, asking some questions and trying to get advice on how to handle it and i just wanted to point it out as as an example of you know if you're um playing the game and you have questions you know he, he was able to to get some good advice uh, keep his character alive in it and in fact he did end up winning that game so yeah just just reiterating discord just a good source for information about so but i also want to reiterate uh, my point about the ladder the angband ladder which is that um i feel like for the angband community a lot of the activity takes place on the discord or on the angband.live website and that's great because it's like a chat you know everyone is sort of having a conversation but one issue about that is that that information is not really captured so new players have to come in and take the initiative to ask questions again uh, questions that have been answered before um, so i think it's good to i mean there's nothing wrong with that it's good to be engaged but not everybody wants to do that so i, I think it's good to like capture information as much as possible which is one of the reasons obviously that i'm doing these videos but if you do um feel like it um uploading your character build on the Angband forum ladder is another way to capture some information and provide some examples for people to learn from. So I just think it's a good idea. Okay, so we, we had our break last episode and uh, I know everyone was just, just couldn't wait to see Lajos go down to the throne room. I'm not gonna uh, make you guys wait any longer. I've been teasing you this whole episode been five minutes already so let's go down yes we want to descend 
Loud rose a din of laughter, hoarse, self-loathing, yet without remorse. Loud came a singing, harsh and fierce, like swords of terror souls to pierce. Red was the glare through the open doors, of firelight mirrored on brazen floors. And up the arches, towering clomb, to gloom's unguessed, to vaulted dome, swathed in wavering smokes and steams, stabbed with flickering lightning gleams. I think that word is glooms, not glooms. Glooms is a different word, but <laughs> didn't want to stop. Anyway. All right, so we are at the throne room. Now, I think it's time to talk some more. So I want to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, the mechanics of the throne room. I, I did talk about it in my last video, but uh, I think not everyone will have seen the last video, and it's always good to reiterate anyway. So I'm going to use my Staff of Revelations to show the floor. Fortunately, I don't have a um, Staff of Foes that would be useful here. But... um. So you can see the layout of the throne room. Now these little uh, rooms have treasure and monsters in them. There's a hallway to the left side. Some rooms on the bottom and on the right. And then this large area in the center. And down towards the bottom of the large area is where Morgoth is standing. Now the throne room doesn't work quite like the rest of the game. So you can see that this troll guard has seen me. But even though monsters see you in the throne room, uh, it doesn't mean that they're going to attack you. Because this is Morgoth's throne room, and the monsters there are waiting for him to pass his judgment on you before they attack. So what that means is, even if they see you, they won't attack you. They'll actually get out of your way. And... Nothing, including Morgoth, will attack you until you've broken the tension. So the ways you can break the tension are attacking a monster, or stepping adjacent to a monster that can see you, or picking up loot if monsters can see you, uh, or um, attempting to pry more than one Silmaril, having your weapon shatter that will break the tension and everything will become aware of you. Which, of course, is what happened to Baron and the Lay of Baron and Luthien when he was using Angrist to prize him somewhere else. One of the cool things about this game, I think, is... I, I think this ending is really cool in general. I think it's uh, really thematic. Um, and also, Angrist is the best soul cutter in the game, so it works with the story. So, I've decided... I've been thinking about how we're going to handle the throne room and I've decided what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do, which I forgot to do before we came down here, is drop the Staff of Sanctity. So our inventory is full. I noticed this <laughs> between videos, and that's not a good thing because once we pry a Silmaril, it's going to be an item in our inventory. And if our inventory is full, It'll attempt to come into our inventory. The inventory will be full, so the Silmora will overflow and it'll fall on the floor nearby. And I've had it happen twice, where uh, I was playing a, a pacifist character. I pried a Silmora, nobody noticed me. It overflowed my inventory, and it landed under Borgoth. First time, it was pretty new to the game, and I, I just sort of laughed for a bit, and then... um. I attempted to, to do something, but I died. The second time, I actually notified Morgoth of my existence and then ran away. And I was able to um, get everyone to forget about me, circle back, and pick up the sill. But uh, it's not a good thing. You don't want that to happen. And we're not going to be purifying anything anymore. So I think that's good. Now, yeah, these monsters are noticing us. So what we're going to do is we're going to buff ourselves. We're going to buff ourselves with everything we have. I'm just looking at my inventory to make sure I don't make any mistakes. Let me look at my, uh, my equipment to make sure I didn't forget to, you know, re-equip something. Yeah, I think we look good. Uh, we have the Sapphire Ring of Protection on. Um, we don't have our, um, any of our Rings of Resistance on. 
However, we do have passive poison resistance, and we have uh, fire resistance from our mask, and we're going to quaff elemental resistance, just in case something comes up that has a, an elemental attack. The next thing we're going to do is quaff quickness, dexterity, constitution, and not rage yet, not yet. Uh, we might do strength it depends depends on if so well i guess we'll get to that um, we'll not worry about it yet um okay so we've buffed ourselves now we're going to fire no arrows on our first quiver so we're going to do shift f for our second quiver yeah what arrows did we have oh yeah plus three okay could remember if we still had those special arrows and we're going to attack. Now you can see the troll guard lets out a cry. The tension is broken. Now we do have to do one other thing, which is we are going to sing slang. We're a good crowd fighter, you know. Uh, a huge crowd of monsters is gonna come and fight us. So this is gonna test our crowd fighting ability. Now there's one other ability that I wanna get for the ascent. But we'll deal with that when the ascent comes. Uh, we should have enough experience, I believe, to pick up outwit. So when it, when you receive a critical roll, make a perception roll against the attacker's perception. You succeed and negate all critical damage. So I just want to be a little bit more defensive. I'm I'm really more worried about surviving right now than I am about doing damage. Um. I need to knock the crown off Morgoth's head, but we're not fighting him today. I don't think this character can handle Morgoth. Um, Morgoth is a... it's no joke. He's, he's extremely powerful. He's really hard to kill. And uh, I don't think this character can, can do it. I, I'm not really an expert on killing Morgoth either. And I don't want to attempt it for my first full playthrough. We're going to keep it simple. Um, hopefully we'll do it at some point. Um, but I would like to take out wit. My only, my only worry is, I guess I just mentioned, the other thing I want is Delvings. So Delvings is 1,500, and um, Outwit is 1,500, but I need to get 900 more experience, which I, I should be able to get. Um, the thing is, Delvings is so important. Uh, let's, let's just see how this goes right now. We did eight damage. That's not great. Um, we do have to use our rage herb. How many rage herbs do we have? We have three. Let's just use it. I didn't use it yet because um, it has a shorter duration than the other buffs. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure we were getting the best use out of it. But we're going to go ahead and use it. Um, so let's see. We did 7, 25, and 17 damage. Okay. We have not taken... Or, um, uh, our health is full. That's what I mean to say. We only took 1 damage. We're poisoned, but that's okay. Your song soars as the troll guard falls before you. The song of slaying did that, uh, a little bit of work for us. Our foes are daunted. They're running. Others are coming. Um, that's Gorthar, um, aka Sauron. Um, but we can't um, give you any information about him because we're enraged right now. Let's see if we can get our free hits. Yep. With our um, spear mastery. So far, we've taken almost no damage. It's going, it's going very well. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Serpent Breathed Darkness. I almost think that Serpents are helpful for us here. Because they're going to do their breath attack. It's going to hit other monsters. Now, um, this is a vampire unique whose name, uh, Thuringwithil. That's right, it's in the message log. We saw him last episode. I think I should be able to handle him. 
wish Morgoth would make his appearance. Yeah, we have a lot of experience. So let's go ahead and take out Wit, even though we're not really taking any damage. You know, Morgoth will be here soon. Gorthar is here. Other monsters are here. We don't want to take any chances. So there's Morgoth. We've killed everything around us. I'm just going to see if there's anything I want. Oh, you know, I want to mention the reason. So, I mean, I think it's partially obvious that why I'm on this staircase. I want Morgoth to come to us. Uh, in the past, I have gone down and hit him, picked up his crown, and then exchanged places my way out of the throne room. That's how I used to do it. I did it that way because Quick Hatch did that in his uh, his cut to sill. Which is still a good video. Um, I imagine most of it is still relevant, um, although I believe it's about vanilla, vanilla sill. It's four and a half hours. It's a good intro to sill. I, I watched it. I've seen it twice, I think. Um... Yeah, and that's how he did it. And that's, I mean, there's advantages to doing that, doing it that way, especially if you have a really defensive character, you probably don't think you're going to take that much damage. You pick up the, the crown, you can try to price those somewhere else um, on your own time. But um, I feel like this is better. Partially because um, I've had it happen in the past where you, you go down to fight Morgoth. And... Um, Morgoth can... Let's look at him. Morgoth, Lord of Darkness. He's the master of the Pits of Bang Bend. You haven't, oh, you haven't countered this foe because... Um, uh, either... Um, because I have full monster knowledge on, or because I did something in the throne room at some point in a wizard. I, I don't know. Oh, no. I saw uh, last episode, obviously. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Some some fluff, fluff about him. He can attempt to cause earthquakes. Song of binding, song of piercing. Radiate light, open doors, unlock doors, bash down doors, and tunnel through walls. So, when he, I guess he's using his hammer, Grand to cause earthquakes, you can imagine. Yeah, it says in his right hand, he bears ground. And what that means is that he'll like destroy walls and rubble will come down from the ceiling. Um, and also he'll create pits. And it's possible for him to create a pit under you. And then all the monsters are surrounding you from the throne room. And you can't exchange places because you're in a pit, but you can't get out of the pit because you're surrounded. And you can't stop being surrounded because you can't exchange places because you're in a pit. <laughs> so we don't want that to happen. So that's another reason that we're on this staircase, because um, he can't create a pit on the staircase. So we're going to um, our quickness has has run out. We're going to quaff strength. Because we want to do it early. We're going to wait a turn. We're going to quaff. Quickness. Wait a turn. The, the serpent's attacking us, but I'd rather wait a turn and try to get a free hit on Morgoth as he steps to us. So we hit him, but we did not do any damage. Now it is worth noting that he doesn't appear to have any resist resistances. So that's good. We got a good hit. I'm not 100% sure about the um, the crown mechanics, but as best as I can say, uh, the way the, the crown works is you can knock it off by getting two good hits on it, on him. So a really, a really low hit, like uh, two damage or something, won't be enough, but a reasonable hit, if I had to guess, probably over 10, because that's the, um, 10 is the threshold for, um, or uh, not fear for cowardice to work so I guess it's the same I'm just again that's just a guess we only did 13 damage there and it worked 
The force of your blow knocks the iron crown off balance. So it's still on his head, but it's off balance. The other ways to get it out are to use a horn of force and to make him fall asleep. So that time, then we did 14 damage and we knocked his crown off. Excellent. So we can look at some um, with the um, left square bracket, sorry, right square bracket. A master, massive iron crown of Morgoth to the southwest. So when I first did this, like a long time ago, before I knew anything about the about the game, I think I knocked his crown off, and then I couldn't like find it, or I didn't realize I knocked it off, or something like that. I mean, very silly. So he it fell underneath him actually. Well, that's fine. So we're gonna exchange exchange places. And now, um, it, to attempt to prize a Silmaril from the crown, use the destroy command, which is K by default. Now we have two options here. We could either prize the Silmaril by pressing K and then Y, and then Morgoth will get a hit on us. Or we could try to pick up the crown and then leave with it. Uh, either one is fine. Um, if we wanted more than one Silmaril, we would probably just leave. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I, I believe the way it works is that the more attempts you make after the first Silmaril is prized, uh, the more likely it is that your weapon will break. And once your weapon breaks, you can't try again. Like You can't try another weapon. Once your weapon breaks, the crown is no longer usable. And in fact, I think it disappears. So in order to get multiple Silmarils, you probably want to have a good Silmaril cutter that is not your main weapon, because you don't want your main weapon to be destroyed. We don't really have that. We have that great sword, but I'm sure it's a fine Sil cutter, but it's probably not the best. Um, I think we're just going to Let's just, let's just try it. Press K. Just want to, I just wanted to double check. So we, we got uh, strength, dex, and constitution. Honestly, I, I took strength because then you need seven strength to um pick up the crown. We have six. So we start with three. We have three more from the potion of strength. And then if we uh, took an herb, herb of rage, we would have seven and that would be enough. But first, let's just try to prize the Silmaril. So K and then Y. Oh. We did um, a good amount of damage. We did 21 damage, but it rolled to 21 for a 10 d4 um, armor. You just need to beat the armor by one. We, we did not manage to do it, and we'll try again. But we did not manage to do it again. Morgoth got a good hit on us, but um, we still have 119 health. Now we have a lot less health. Uh... Our constitution ran out, so let's drink Miru for. Let's drink constitution. Let's drink, or let's take healing. Now we're back to where we were. Let's take quickness. Let's take dexterity. And let's try again. Uh, we were having a hard, a hard time. But we were knocked off. We did it. Got a Silmaril. So we did 40, 12. We did 33. We beat the armor by 5. We got a Silmaril. We're going to step on the crown, step on the up staircase, and we're going to leave. Make quick your escape. It shall be hard won. Now, we do have this staff of revelations. So we're going to go ahead and use it a few times. Of revelations will show you the whole floor, so that's nice. That's one way to make the ascent easier. Now, one thing to remember about the ascent is that, as you can see, 
there are no upstairs. Uh, only up shafts spawn on the ascent, which is nice. I mean, it makes it quicker. You go up 100 feet every time you take a, an up shaft. The other thing to remember about the ascent, oddly enough, is that the game stops punishing you for stairs coming. So even on 9, 950, we just came up from the throne room. If you go down, it just rerolls the floor. So now I just felt like I wasn't safe. Like we would have to walk pretty far to get to a uh, upshaft and we might encounter Morgoth and Morgoth might kill us. So I don't want to do that. We're going to pick up healing. We're going to use revelations. There's a uh, an upshaft that's not too far. Um, oh, here's one that's even closer. We're gonna pick up this quickness, and we're gonna keep an eye on the message lock. You hear singing in the distance. So um, that's Morgoth singing, and there he is. So we're just going to run away. I don't want to have anything to do with Morgoth. I'm going to be very careful. We've used up all of our revelations and we haven't even found, so we haven't even gone up a single floor. So we might try to go up there. That's not too far away. We are fast. Um, because of our boots we don't have to bother with fighting these monsters it's just gonna slow us down now we're gonna take a song of delvings and we found a very quick upstairs this is kind of going to be similar to what we were doing last time last episode just looking for that upstairs. So there's more goth. Yeah, we just reroll. Well, first we pick up this ceiling, then we reroll. Re We're just gonna scum. We're gonna stair scum. No reason to be risky. Take it nice and slow. Not the best at playing roguelikes slowly. I try, but don't have the patience for it. But um, the ascent is, you know, put a lot of time and effort into this character. Uh, this is my first character on camera that I'm actually going through the whole game. prefer to win if I can. If I die, it's okay. It'd be kind of funny. But ideally, we would just win. Oh. I made a mistake there. Uh, sorry about some... Oh, he just destroyed the wall. Kind of radio silence here. But I'm being very careful. I don't see any uh, ups there. That is a up shaft that is close enough. Um, let's see. I have um. Some Miravar, Miravor. I always say Miravar. That's how it is in my head. Oh, you know, I, I never used the uh, Silmaril. So, um, let's look at the Silmaril. It sustains your grace. It grants you the ability to see invisible creatures. It cannot be harmed by the elements. It is a light source with a radius of seven squares. It will shine forever. So, yeah, the best light source in the game. Um, 
I could be wrong about the uh, let's let's look at them. Um, okay, yeah. So, uh, Feanorian lamp has a light source, a radius of four. If you have a Feanorian lamp of brightness, um, that'll be five, and then somewhere else is uh, is it seven, right? Yeah, very bright. So that's that's super cool. Yeah, I, I think it's like um, a little crazy that you can be so scummy here, but uh, you know, we're gonna do everything we can. Dang, there's more goth. Um, we're gonna use um quickness, and uh, we're gonna sing freedom. Because he can lock doors, and we, we wanted to unlock the door. Morgoth doesn't... like, know where we are. That's one thing to remember. If he finds us... It's because he's wandering the level. I mean, he's looking for us. But he doesn't just know. I feel like... My song running so low. I'm gonna be at risk here. But I really don't want to wander too far. I just want to be a, co a coward as much as possible. See here, we found it. 350 feet. Being a coward paid off. You gotta be a coward when you play roguelikes, you know? Darren Gray has a thing about how you're not a hero. Play roguelikes, you're a rogue. Um. Yeah, so we found another ep shaft. So we're at uh, 250 feet, which is pretty good. We're getting there. Not a voice. Um, I'm trying to think, do I want to do something about the fact that we've run out of voice? The problem is Miravore is so strong as a healing. Now we have eight black potions of healing. We can't just wait. There's Morgoth. Um, I mean, we don't, um, this isn't a turn count run. So there's more goth again. We uh, there's the upstairs. It doesn't matter how many turns. Like uh, let's see, twenty-eight thousand turns. It's um, I mean it's not bad. That's pretty normal, I think. You know we didn't do one thousand feet a second time. So that's part of the reason. It would have taken us more turns if we had. Okay, there's a upshaft. Regular monsters. We do encounter Morgoth. I mean, we were in contact with him earlier. Oh, we were fully buffed, though. So it's definitely worth remembering. Um, it's a very different experience to be in contact with Morgoth. Um, when you are fully buffed. So we can't go, or we can go that way, but it's going to take a bit longer. Let's go this way. It's a huge difference, and so don't get like too, um, too brazen. Let's go up. Now we are on the, uh, the surface. 
can see our depth is zero. You can go right or left. It's the same. Uh, I always go left for no reason. Just tend to. There's a spiked pit here, but um, spiked pits are very common in this hallway. Uh, there's probably a spike pit, spiked pit on the other side anyway. It's just sink staunching. It's not going to do much damage to us, but... I don't want to take any damage if I don't have to, so everything has seen us. Um, I don't feel like fighting um, anything. There is loot in here. Um, I mentioned that in the last video, I suppose. In fact, there's, there's quite a, kind of a lot of loot, but... Um, I don't just care. I, I just want to win. We don't need loot anymore. Now, there is Karkaroth, and of course we saw him in the last video, uh, and he killed us. Um, so let's take Constitution, let's take uh, Quickness, let's... Um, I think that's probably it. And let's walk down. The door is stuck. Let's exchange places with Karkaroth. Let's see if he does any damage to us. Good poisons. Poisons, but it's gonna go away. I think we're fine. I'm just being slow. Um, I kind of want to try to use Majesty. I'm just curious if he's gonna run. Yeah, he did run. Yeah, I've made him run uh, pretty often in pacifist characters. But I just wanted to try it here because I'm not singing a uh, song of staying the way I normally would. So I've got um, eight points in will. And that was enough to make him run. And uh, yeah, here we are. We have some experience. Let's um, drink a Miravore. It has a gentle warmth and it tastes as of flowers. We did it. Ladros of Fingolfin's house. Greta Silmaril. Escaped the Iron Hells and brought back the light of Alinor. So, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I had a really good time with that character. Uh, I've been really, uh, really enjoying um, doing these videos, so um, I, I intend to continue to do them. Uh, I really appreciate everyone who's um, who's watched, um, everyone who said something in the comments or on Discord or on the forums. Um, yeah, it definitely encourages me to continue to make them. Um, my plan is for the next video to do an Adine pacifist as a bit of a challenge, uh, but we'll see, you know, um, maybe I'll make a game time decision, but most likely that will be what we come back with uh, for the next video. So again, uh, I really appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.